Are you represented by counsel? No. Okay. Uh, if at any time uh, you don't understand the proceedings here today, let me know and I'll, I'll do my best to, to try to make things clear, okay? All right, thank you. Now, did you receive a copy of the order and notice of hearing concerning today's matter? Um, Don Jeffrey sent me a notice that, uh, that it was for the meeting. Okay. And are you ready to proceed today? Yes. Okay. Uh, could the board's counsel please identify yourself for the record, Ms. Martin? Um, I re the respondent. Um, talk to if everyone can make sure that you're muted, unless you are speaking, that will be helpful uh, for the call. Thank you. Scott, could you identify yourself again? That we only got um, the first couple words. Yes, this is Sky Martin for the respondent, which is Division of Child Care and Early Childhood Education, DHS. Thank you. For the benefit of anyone present today who may not have appeared in an administrative hearing, the panel will base its decision solely on the evidence presented here today. This hearing is held under the Administrative Procedures Act, which means that the strict rules of evidence do not apply and the parties will be given latitude in, in introducing evidence. This is to promote a fair hearing and provide the panel with adequate information to make a decision. To ensure the efficiency of the proceedings, I will grant objections or caution parties only as necessary. If there is anything that you have in your possession that you want the panel to consider, you must offer it into evidence today. All participants to the hearing should be aware that these proceedings are subject to the Freedom of Information Act, and as such, all parts of the hearing, including the deliberations of the panel, are open to the public. It is important that all persons necessary to the hearing uh, are here during uh, the proceedings. If a party uh, attorney or panel member needs to take a break or leave the leave the, the Zoom call, please advise me and we'll take a break in the proceedings. Uh, who all is going to be a witness here today? Uh, we have witness Joshua Brown. Okay. Uh, and Mrs. Martin Lou, uh, who are you going to have as a witness here today? Myself. Okay. Um, if you can raise your right hand and, and Josh uh, Brown, if you can raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Yes. Okay. Are there any preliminary matters that need to be discussed uh, or any preliminary evidence that needs to be offered at this time? The state offers our... <laughs> packet, which is 27 pages, um, which would be Respondents Exhibit 1. Okay. Uh, Ms. Martin, do you have any objections? No. Okay. It'll be admitted. Uh, and I, I noticed you were about to say something well ago. No, just the things that I submitted to your office in the beginning. Okay. Uh, Ms. Martin, do you have any objections to those? Um, as far as the part of the minimum licensing requirements, we always give the panel members a copy of all of the minimum licensing requirements um, so they can look at those. So that's, it's redundant, but I have no objection to them having it. Um, the, uh, the only one I do have an objection to, there were emails um, to and from Kelly Hilburn. Those dealt with uh, a probationary provisional action that is not relevant to today's hearing. So I would object to those on relevance. Okay. As to the redundancy, I'm going to allow it just so that it's a cleaner part of the record itself. Um, I, I do recognize that I know y'all do distribute those uh, guidelines and, and the regulations to, to panel members, but just so that it's part of the record, I'm gonna go ahead and allow it. Um, and you said your objection is to the emails? Yes, there were some emails from last year and the substance of the emails was about a, us placing them on a probationary provisional license status. 
which has nothing to do with today's hearing or any issues we'll be discussing. So I, I object on relevance. Um, Mrs. Okay. Morgan, if it, if it wasn't for the provisional license to begin with, we wouldn't be here today. There wouldn't be any attempt to shut down and smear the name of that daycare, which is already closed. If it hadn't been for the provisional license, they wouldn't have had uh, any reason to be on to send me that notice. It's very relevant. The whole purpose of this, the whole purpose of the closing of this daycare was to make up for the fact that it was on provisional and they're trying to make it sound like because it was on provisional, we just made no efforts to do it. and. They tried their best to get us to do something. I, and then now they have good reason to um, close down an already closed down daycare center. Okay, given that the rules um, of evidence are incredibly relaxed in an administrative percent, uh, including the, the relevancy rules. I'm going to, while, while I think they're, they're only marginally relevant, I'm still going to find they're relevant enough they should be included within the record here. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and hit them uh, at this time. Thank you. Okay. All right, I'm going to be sending those via email. Um, to our panel members, you're going to get two separate emails, one with DCCECE's evidence and the other with Ms. Martin Lou's evidence. They'll be sent to you right now. And it looks like the between the the two sets of packets, we're looking at a total of maybe forty, fifty pages. So I'm going to give everybody about ten minutes to look through those. All the panel <laughs> members can be familiar with what what we have here. Those items have been emailed out, so you should be receiving those panel members in your email box. And to our court reporter, I'm going to make sure that I send those to you as well. Yes. Uh, Laura, uh, the petitioners uh, exhibits, which would be the emails um, from, I believe it would be the Yahoo account. Um, of course, I'm not sure how Ms. Mitchell is sending them out, but those will be collectively labeled uh, Petitioner's Exhibit 1. 
and the packet from the panel uh, will be, which I think appears to be about 27 pages, will be received.
uh, 10 minutes here. Ms. Martin, who has the uh, burden of proof here? Uh, we do as we are revoking. Okay. Ms. Martin Lou, are you with us? She is still in our participant list, so she may have just had to step out for a moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm showing her as muted on my screen. Okay, I'll try this again. Ms. Ms. Martin Lou, are you with us? It's been a little over 10 minutes at this point. Ah, there you are. I think you're on mute. There we go. There we go, okay. You ready to proceed? Whenever you guys are. Okay, uh, Ms. Martin, since you have the burden of proof, would you like to uh, make an opening statement? Yes, um, and, and please tell me if you can't hear me. Uh, the, the Division of Child Care and Early Childhood Education is asking that the decision to revoke Apple Development Daycare's child care license be upheld. Apple Development has failed to maintain substantial compliance, failed to correct cited deficiencies in a timely manner, and failed to ensure the health, safety, and welfare of the children. 
On September 25th, 2020, the owner of Apple Development Daycare, Mary Marden Lou, was told that her health and fire inspections were overdue. Under minimum licensing rule 801, these inspections must be kept current. Since that time, DHS has repeatedly uh, told Ms. Martin Lou that she must have current fire and health inspections to comply with our minimum licensing requirements. She has still not met these requirements for her center, and so we ask that the decision to revoke Apple Development Daycare's child care license be upheld. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Martin Lou. You have the uh, opportunity now to either make an to make an opening statement either now or if you would prefer to delay your opening statement to the start of your case, you can do that as well. Um, just to say that Apple Daycare was closed down on May the first first day of May. On April thirtieth, I was given a phone call that oh by the way we're going to put you on provisional provisional license. And they contacted, before they even contacted me, they contacted Better Beginnings. They contacted the people that give out vouchers. They contacted my parents that have been coming there for years and said, oh, by the way, you need to find new daycare because we're shutting this one down. And the parents on Friday afternoon at 4.30, we're, re we're required to find new daycare for Monday morning. Um, there was no lead up to it, no chance for any kind of appeal, no anything. They just called the parents and said, we're not paying for your daycare. If you go to that daycare, you pay for it yourself. Um, because a lot of the things that were on that provisional license were absolutely not true, and they knew they weren't true. Um, there was never any chance to appeal this. So back to this other. Um, on December 14th or December 4th, I got an email from Josh that said, you need to contact the department, which by the time I got around to it, he told me that I needed to have a, an inspection and so forth on it. I told him I'm not in the state that the building has been closed and all of their exhibits show that it has been closed since the first day of May. I can't pay my teachers. I can't pay the light bill. I can't pay anything from that daycare when they have told the parents to leave or not be paid for. Um, so they knew that it was closed. Uh, in September, I went down there and there was never any mention of this, the fire department or health department, but the rules state that an oper these rules apply to operational daycares. And I've sent a copy of that with, with the emails. Uh, if, if it's not open, it's not, you don't pay a license fee if it's on probationary, you don't pay a license fee. And there's no one in the building, not, nothing is in the building for them to even inspect. I've had the health department and the fire department say in all their years of, of more than 20 years, they've never seen this before, that someone's asking them to come in and uh, inspect an empty building. Now, DHS knows that building has been empty. No one has been there. In fact, I'd like to thank Josh for proving that point with his visitations. Um, yeah. So it, it also states that if that you're able to close it for 30 days or for uh, one year, I'm going to go back to that email. Ms. Martin, you'll, you'll be given an opportunity in a little bit to present your face. This is just, just opening statements. Okay. But the, the, whole, the opening statement, the, the whole point of this opening statement is that there is never any threat to the well-being of the children. 
any fire safety health inspection would only be relevant if there are kids present. They had no reason to be coming in there with a closed business. There was no reason to have a health inspection. And what they did show is that at the time I closed the door, the health inspection, the fire inspection, the boiler inspection, all of this was current and up to snuff. So after we closed it, at the time we closed it, everything was in compliance. That's all. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Martin, uh, you may begin the presentation of your case. Oh, yes. I called Joshua Brown. Let the record reflect uh, Mr. Brown was sworn in at the end. Mr. Brown, can you state your full name for the record and where you are employed? Yes, ma'am. My name is Joshua Brown, and I'm employed with the Division of Child Care and Early Childhood Education. You sound really quiet. Can everyone hear Mr. Brown? It's hard to hear Mr. Brown. I, I can barely hear him. Mr. Brown, if you could somehow um, put your volume where we can hear you, I could not hear you. Can you hear me now, Ms. Martin? There seems to be a lot of static. Mr. Brown, you may just have to speak up a little bit more. Ms. Martin, can you hear me now? Barely, barely. Um, we can try to go with this. I don't know if it, yeah, the court reporter says that better. Just speak as loud as you can because there seems to be something wrong with your mic. Um, what is your, um, can you state again your name and where you are employed? Yes, ma'am. My name is Joshua Brown, and I work for the Division of Child Care and Early Childhood Education. What is your position there? Uh, I am a child care service specialist. And what are the duties and responsibilities of that position? My job as a child care service specialist is to monitor and ensure that licensed facilities in the state, state of Arkansas are following the minimum licensing requirements. How are you familiar with Apple Development Daycare? I'm currently assigned as the um, primary uh, child care service specialist for that um, facility. And can you turn to page two of Respondents Exhibit 1, um, where it is a letter dated January 8th, 2021, Notice of Adverse Action? Yes, ma'am. Do you recognize this letter? Yes, ma'am. And what is this document? This is a revocation packet saying the division is revoking the license of Apple Development Daycare due um, to the health and fire inspections not being renewed. Uh, the division has made several attempts to explain that the fire and health inspections were needed. Okay, and let's go ahead to page eight. And it says facility visit compliance notice uh, and it's May 8th, 2020. What did you observe during this visit to the facility? Yes, the um, child care service specialist observed the lights were off and the building was locked and empty um, during this visit on May 8th, 2020. And on pages nine, 10 and 11, there are visits May 21st, June 10th, and July 16th of 2020. What were observed during these visits to the facility? Um, it also, the lights were off and the building was locked and empty on those three visits as well. And on page 12, uh, what was observed on a visit of August 20th, 2020? The door was locked and there was no one inside, but at this time it appeared that a construction company was using um, part of the parking lot to store their equipment. Okay, and on page 13, there are emails between yourself and a Mr. Stanley Clark that are from September of 2020. Can you tell me about these emails? Yes, this is an email. Um, I had emailed Mr. Clark, the uh, Van Buren Fire Marshal, just trying to reach out to see if um, they had completed the inspection for Apple Development Daycare. 
um, and later it was stated that um, they had not been able to because the building had been closed. Okay, uh, going to page 15, there's a visit on September 8th, 2020. What was observed during this visit? During this visit, uh, the lights um, were out and the door was still locked, but um, playground had been mowed and toys were on the curbside um, of the parking lot. Um, and that a construction equipment that was um, viewed in the previous visit was still present. Uh, yes, was still present. Turning the page to 16, there is a, a note created in September of 2020 that you created. Can you tell us about this note that you created? Yes, I had hit, sent um, a due health inspection notice um, stating that it was due um, before it became due. And at that time um, on September 14th, I had received a, a mail with a label that said return to sender. And that was sent to the facility. You cut off. You said that was sent to the facility? Yes, ma'am. Okay. On page 17, there's another visit dated November 13th, 2020. What was observed during this visit? At this time, uh, the, the doors were locked and the lights were turned off, um, but some playground equipment um, had been removed. Um, I mean, there were still a few things there, but it did appear that someone had been there taking things off of the playground. And then turning the page to page 18, and, and be sure to still speak up. You're, you're still hard to hear. Um, on page 18, there is a letter dated November 13th, 2020, that looks like you sent to Miss Marnden Lou. Can you tell us about this letter you sent? Yes, I sent this letter after making um, several attempts to Miss Marnden Lou. Um, and I explained that if contact wasn't made by December 4th, 2020, um, then action could be taken, uh, further action could be taken uh, against the facility. Okay. On page 19, can you tell us about this facility note you made on, on Apple development? Yes, the letter um, in the previous on page 18, I had documented the tracking number that I mailed to the United States Postal Service. And then turning to pages 20, 21, and 22, there are emails between you and Ms. Martin Lou. Uh, can you tell us about this communication that you had? Yes, this is another email um, that I had sent to Ms. Martin Lou. Just an attempt to explain that even though the facility is closed, she still had a license with the state of Arkansas. And it was a requirement through minimum license requirement that the health and fire inspection kept, was to be kept current. So even though it's closed, if she has an active license, you're saying she needs to have her fire and health inspections done? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then going on to page 23, there is an email from you to Ms. Martin Lou again. Can you tell me about this email? Yes, this is an email. At the first of it, I was explaining that on um, April 30th, 2020, April Apple development was placed on a provisionary provisional status, but due to the facility being closed, um, if they were to reopen um, their facility, the, the probationary provisional status um, would start from the day of reopening and would, re and would re remain in effect for six months. But at the, towards the end of it, also explained again that it was um, important that the fire and health inspection was to be current. And then turning to page 24, um, she responded to you on December 17th, 2020. Um, can you tell us about her response? Yes, this is uh, an email um, from Ms. Martin Lou explaining they have not cared for children since May 3rd, 2020. Um, she explained at that time that the fire and health inspections were current as the day they closed, but have went overdue since um, that period of time. And Ms. Mar Martin Lou acknowledges that um, it is required that annual inspection shall be kept current in the last uh, sentence of her email. Can you read that last sentence of her email to us? 
if the licensee requests that the license remain open, license fees and required annual inspection shall be kept current. Okay, thank you. And she sent that to you, acknowledging she knew that. Yes, ma'am. Turning the page to 25, um, there's a facility note from Lisa Bush. Can you tell us about this facility note? Yes, it was a, a facility note that my supervisor, Ms. Bush, had documented um, explaining um, that she had talked to Ms. Martin Lou um, how important it was that the fire and health inspections were to be um, current. And Ms. Martin Lou kind of explained her situation. My supervisor explained that she um, may try to call the Van Buren Fire Department and the Health Department to see if there was something that they could put in writing um, saying that it was um, current at this time. And then you added a facility note on our page 26 from January 5th, 2021. Uh, can you tell us about that note that you added? Yes, I documented in our system um, because Mr. Clark had called me. He explained that Ms. Martin Lou did contact him, um, but that considering the facility was closed and the fire inspection had went overdue, that he was not able to say that the fire inspection was current at that time. Um, he stated that when facilities are closed, um, it also has like the batteries um, and the exit signs go out and things like that. So that the fire inspection would not be current at this time. And then on our last page 27, there's an email from Ash Abney. Um, and this is January 15th, 2021. Can you tell our um, email? I'm sorry. Can you tell us about this email? Yes, this is. Just uh, our assistant director, Ash, Ashlyn Abney, I'm stating that um, we were revoking, the division was revoking the license of Apple Development Daycare 2 solely due to the fire and health inspection not being current. And in summary, based on what you've told us, why is it important that Apple Development Daycare's license be revoked? Minimum licensing requirements are put into place as a very minimum to ensure children are healthy and safe. Ms. Marlin could open her facility at any time with an active child care license. With the fire and health inspections not being in compliance, this could potentially put any child at risk that may enter the building of Apple Development Daycare Center. And it is our duty to ensure all children in the state of Arkansas have a safe and healthy place for <laughs> child care. Um, even though the, the building is closed, she still has an active license with the state of Arkansas. And the minimum licensing requirements covers the active license. Thank you so much. Uh, I passed the witness. You're passing the witness to me. Ms. Martin Lou, do you have any questions for this witness? Oh my goodness. Um, no, except they're, they're interpretation of my response to him is way off base. Well, you, you'll be given an opportunity a little bit to testify on your own behalf that this is purely you have questions for the witness. Right. Can, can the witness please read that last sentence that you claim that I acknowledged that I needed to have current In the very last sentence, um, read the sentence before it, please. Oh, the regulation before that is any facility that has not provided care to children for a period of one year shall be closed unless a written request is made by the licensee stating why closure should not take place. If the licensee requests that the license re remain open, license fees and required annual inspections shall be kept current. Yes, if they request that it be reopened, yes. Okay. That's all. Do any members of the panel have any questions for this witness? Uh, one question for me, I just haven't encountered this, but if the facility is closed and the fire code is not up to date and then a fire happens and somebody will get hurt, because the license is valid, because it's open, does 
is there um, uh, so, sort of who's going to answer for that? Both the owner and DHS. Sorry, I don't know if this is the right uh, if the if the uh, witness is going to the right person to answer that. <laughs> Can you repeat your question, ma'am? So, if something happens, you know, well. The, the facility is closed. I understand there's no kids, the facility is closed. But if a fire happens because the fire code is not updated, who is liable? With an active license um, with the state of Arkansas, uh, due to um, our division giving a license out, um, the owners and the division would be responsible for anything that happened to that building. And if the owner decides to sort of close the, suspend the license, you know, like they're closed for now and then they can reopen the license later? They, they could close it, but there was never any documentation from Ms. Martin Lou um, closing the facility, um, what, like closing the license, I guess I should mean. There was documentation that she closed as the building, but she never closed her license. Right, but but if she closed the license, she could reopen it later on, right? I mean, I mean, and now close and reopen, but sort of if she she puts it on hold right now, she can reopen the license. I, at least that's what I'm thinking is possible. If she was to close the license before this um, revocation. I believe that she would have been able to reopen the child care center. Thank you. Any further questions of this way? Seeing as there are none from the panel, Ms. Martin, do you have any redirect? No, just, no. just that. No, you're on. Uh, Oh, Your Honor, um, not at this time. At this time, the agency rests. Okay. Um, well, since there was a panel question, you would have the opportunity to redirect, but Ms. Uh, Martin Lou would have the opportunity to recross. So let me give her the opportunity to recross the witness. Okay. Yes. According to, let me pull this up. According to your own regulations, it says that any facility that's closed for one year, in order to reopen it, they have to have a written, they have to remain, do the annual inspections and they have to make sure that it's inspected. They have to make sure that they meet all the regulations and requirements. They have to contact DHS. They have to contact the fire department. They have to contact the health department. Is this a part of your regulations? I believe you're um, stating like if you go on inactive status. Which so it was on inactive status, but the building was closed. The children were not there. It's obviously on inactive status. But in order to open it back up again, do you not have to have current fire inspections, current licensing inspections, and current health department inspections? Yes, during the time of having an active license, the fire and health inspection does have to be current. If there's no children in the building and it is not operating as a child care center, are you required to have inspections? We did not know the date that you were going to be closed. Um, we didn't know that at what time you would be reopening. Did, was there nothing in my emails to you stating if I decided to open, I would absolutely contact DHS, contact the fire and contact the health department and get my inspections current. Yes, you, you did um, explain that you would contact us, but you still had a current license with the state of Arkansas. I had a current provisional and probationary license, yes. That, that, that you were placed on by the division. The probationary provisional license was placed on by the division, but in regulation 8011, 
um, it states that writ written verification of annual approval shall be maintained on file. And yes, and, and that is absolutely true for currently operating facilities. Right? Is that a question? Words, yes, ma'am. It's a question. Are these regulations not designed for operating facilities? No, ma'am. They're, they're designed for active license with the state of Arkansas. And you have an active license with the state of Arkansas open. Does regulation 101 section eight not state the following standards are minimum licensing requirements which shall be met by persons or organizations which operate a child care facility? Yes, that operate a child care facility. Yes, the licensing re regulations for any facility that's operating a child care facility. I, that, you know, we're, we're going around in circles here. There was no operating facility. There, there was still a license. And I mentioned that if and when I, I ever decided to open it, that I would have a, a health inspection, a fire inspection, a boiler inspection, and your inspection. Is that not true? That you were notified of that? You didn't notify me that you would let us know, but in the state of Arkansas, okay. active license, you have to have a current fire and health inspection. If you're an operating facility, I would agree. That's all. Thank you. Martin, do you have any further um, redirect to this witness? Yes. Um Mr. Mr. Brown, if someone has an active license, do they have to have current health and fire inspections on file with us? Yes, ma'am. If they have an active license, even if they are closed at the moment, could they possibly reopen at any time? Yes, ma'am. If they reopened at any time without current health and fire inspections, um, would that put children at risk? Yes, it very well could. Hey, thank you. No further questions. Ms. Martin Lou, Martin Lou, any uh, further recross? No, only. And, and I and I'll, I'll say I'll save this for later. Um, Ms. Martin, well, do you have not... any um, further witnesses? No, uh, thank you. The agency rest. You, you cut out there at the end. Did you say the agency? Yes. Uh, Ms. Martin Lou, it's now your opportunity, your your time to present your side of the case. So uh, you're, are you are you your only witness? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, then let the record reflect. Ms. Martin Lou was sworn in at the outset of the proceedings. Uh, Ms. Martin Lou, you you may now go proceed with your testimony. All right. Yes. My husband and I have been operating a child care center since 1990. Over the years, we've gone through an awful lot of licensing specialists. Um, some of them were excellent, some of them were new. They're still in the process of learning. But one of the things that has always gone on is we try to go by the rules and they try to go by the rules. They know that Apple Daycare was closed because they saw to that. They saw to it that if we opened, if we maintained our childcare business since 1990, that if a dedicated person can come in and find something wrong, whether it's, I don't know, the vacuum cleaner out of place or they, one of the kids spilled milk on the floor or 
they, they can always find something if they're of the mind to do that. At the time that my facility was closed, they were of the mind to do that. It went on to probational, provisional license. There was never any mention of after six months, you would have, if you reopened, they would still start the six months over again. This is all new. The attempt was to close this facility over things that absolutely were not true. We were not given any notice except be on a phone call on the, the, with DHS, at which time they walked into our facility without their masks and proceeded to read off a letter that had already been cooked up and sent off to everybody in the division. Even after they found out there were a lot of things on there on that letter that were not true, even their own, my own licensing specialist mentioned it's not true. Uh, they still continued to put that into the record and submit it and put it on probational provisional license. Um, I had talked to Ms. Hilburn about it. And even we were on a Zoom meeting or not a, a, a multi-call, multi-person call with my licensing specialist. And my licensing specialist stepped up and said, no, that's not true. That's not true. But it stayed on there. And assuming that they were going to correct the things that they knew weren't true, they still maintained that particular letter with, with all the stuff that wasn't true. They never mentioned what was corrected. They never mentioned anything except their reasons for the provisional license. On the provisional license, they pushed us off of better beginnings. They pushed us out of any kind of compensation for all of the state kids that we were taking care of. You know, they knew it was closed. It had to be closed. At the time it was closed, all of the inspections were current. All of the facility stuff was current. When he kept coming by and checking on it, 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 the letter to Ms. Hilburn stated that we were closed. So they knew from the very beginning it was closed, but they continued to come by and double check on it. The construction company that he saw in the parking lot, that was AOG deciding that it was such a vacant building, it would be no problem for them to dump all of their equipment on our parking lot and do their stuff around the area. There was no one there. These notifications that he sent, that uh, Mr. Brown sent, were sent to a closed building. The phone calls that were made were made to a closed building. Everyone in the department had my email. They had my phone number. They could have called at any time, but chose not to. Why did they, a lot of the things that they sent to me, the, the last and the very ending, uh, particularly the one that said, if you don't contact us by December the 4th, we're gonna shut you down. Uh, that particular one, I believe was forwarded to me from Dawn Jeffries out of the Better Beginnings program. She's the only one that contacted me directly on my email or my phone. That's, and when they started talking about um, licensing, uh, having a health inspection and a fire inspection, if that building burned down, that's all on me because it was not even an active license at the time. That's all on me. My building would burn down. Somebody asked the question, what would happen if it would DHS be, DHS would not be responsible for anything. DHS is not, was not involved in that building whatsoever. And the license was on hold. It was just a non-existent thing. 
the fire department and the health department, because they were so adamant about it, they didn't know what to do. They called me, even the fire department, health department knew how to call me. They called me and they said, what, what, what are they wanting? And I said, I don't know. And they said, nobody's in the building. And I said, I know. They said, there's not even furniture in the building. I know. The playground was, was we had a huge garage sale in October. Put out notices everywhere and gave away to the different Head Start programs and the different preschool programs and uh, the homeless shelter got our blankets and mats and the uh, extra coats that were in the building and the preschool programs came around and I gave them books and puzzles and toys and the play, even some of the playground equipment. They came, they took it and they were, they were grateful. They knew that it was closing down. Everybody knows it was closing down. This is like the last tweak on the cheek of a dying bear. Let's just go in and poke him a little bit before he goes down. There is no purpose to any of this. The building is empty. The kids are not there. There's no health and safety violation. There's no health and safety threat. As I mentioned in my email, the biggest threat that those kids had the entire time was whether or not we're wearing masks around those kids. That's the, the real threat to those kids. Kids that I have taken care of for years and years and years have brought their children to our facility to be taken care of. The hardest thing I ever had to do was to tell them, I won't be there anymore. I live in Utah. I have a house in Utah. I sold my house in Van Buren. It's gone. My daycare is gone. And now the last straw of a wrongly shut down facility is trying to put a revocation on a license that's already closed out. That's already not operational. It's just one last little tweak, one last little hair pull. For what? Because I might sneak back to Arkansas with no house, no business, and open a daycare center just so that I can hurt the kids? I don't think so. This is nonsense. All of it is nonsense. They know it. I know it. They can just let it rest in peace. There's no, after 30 years, more than 30 years, since 1990, I have been in there day in and day out working with the kids. I worked with Faye Wilson for 18 years, you know, just, and in the last year, the year when my husband is critically ill and dying, they start this business of, well, we're going to put you on provisional, provisional life. They accuse this man that would drive to Sam's, have groceries loaded into his car that he had pre-ordered, and then drive back to the daycare so that the girls and I could unload the groceries for the daycare. And then he was so tired, he had to go home and rest for the next four or five hours. He was on dialysis three days a week, which completely, if you know anybody on dialysis, they're wiped out all of that day. They spend four or five hours in a chair, having their blood drawn and pumped out and into the ice cold, pumped back in. They go home and they crash for another eight, 10 hours. The next day, they start to feel a little bit better, but then by the afternoon, they're wore down because they know they have to go back in the next day. Accusing this man of beating up a kid or spanking a child is obscene. This man loved those kids. He was there every day 
taking care of them. While everybody else can come in for 30 minutes, oh, well, you didn't do this and you didn't do that and you need to do this and you need to do that. Uh, we had donut holes for the kids. And we told them, if you eat your lunch, or at least try some of your lunch, you can have these donut holes. If you don't try at least some of your lunch, you're not gonna get the donut holes, period. And that was written down as depriving the children of food substance. You know, it just, the whole thing was frustrating. Uh, one little girl, we, we asked her to, to lay still. They came at nap time. They came at lunch time, the most chaotic times of the day. And when one little girl was just throwing a fit and doing this and that, and the teacher said, look, she said, if you don't behave, I'm going to call your mama. That was threatening children. You know, it's just all of it's nonsense. We're talking about dealing with kids here. And if I can't do it well, if I can't guarantee their health and safety, then I'm not going to do it. I was not coming back to Arkansas because of all this petty nonsense. Why would I? That's, that's it. I've turned in my, my response. If the building is not operating as a child care facility, which it cannot, because it has no kids, it has no furniture, it has no food, it has nothing in the building. I live 1,500 miles away from it. I am not going to sneak in in the middle of the night and start opening a daycare center because it is so much fun. I've been threatened with, well, we're going to, uh, if we find out that you've snuck in and you've opened up this daycare center, uh, then you can be hauled off to jail and, and done this and that. Who, who, who's going to do that? It's crazy. Who's going to sneak in there in the middle of the night? I told everybody, if I wanted to open a daycare center, I would start fresh, make sure I've got the health inspections, the fire inspections, the department of DHS, everybody come in and check it out because I don't want to risk anything that crazy. And it's making it sound like I'm gonna sneak in there in the middle of the night and just open up the doors when nobody's looking and start taking care of kids. It's nonsense. All of it is nonsense. There's no reason after 35 years of service to the kids and my community that I should be treated in this manner, that I should have it revoked for endangering the health and safety of the children. Nonsense. I don't expect a pat on the back. I don't expect a thank you for all the years you've put in towards taking care of our children. But what I do respect, expect is some respect, enough to understand I am leaving voluntarily. I have left that building. I have sold my house. I'm in the process of selling that building. And if it says that it can be reopened after a year. I am not going to reopen it. But I'm also not going to have these guys trying to push me out the door that I'm already out of. It's like one last little push, one last little insult before you go out the door. It's not necessary and it's not right. That's, and that's all I have to say. Ms. Morton, do you have any cross-examination of this witness? No. Do any members of the panel have any questions for this witness? Okay, 
seeing as there are, are no questions, um, Ms. Martin, Lou, did, did you have uh, any further witnesses or were you just your, your only witness? I'm, I'm, I'm it. I'm okay. the last one. Okay. Uh, at this time, uh, we'll move on to closing arguments. Um, Ms. Martin, uh, you may proceed. Yes, um, under our minimum licensing rule 801, fire and health inspections must be kept current on file with DHS. Um, DHS repeatedly um, told Ms. Martin Lou she must have current fire and health inspections to comply with minimum licensing requirements for an active license. Um, Ms. Martin Lou uh, could have relinquished this license at any point. She chose not to. She states that she will not reopen, but she wants to keep an active license. When you keep an active license, then you could reopen possibly, and she would be reopening without fire and health inspections that she must have. Um, we care about the health and safety of the children, and we have to revoke her license because she has refused to get current fire and health inspections on this facility. So we ask that you uphold our decision to revoke Apple Development Daycare's child care license. Thank you. Ms. Martin Lou, do you have any, uh, do you have a closing argument? I do have one last thing to say. And I, I thought I was done, but no. This is not about the safety and health of the children. This is not about an active license or inactive license. The health and safety of the children, the day I closed the doors, was no longer a concern for DHS. If I wanted to reopen, it would be different. But I basically closed it the day I got the, the letter. It was closed. And the only, there was still the hope that I could get all of this stuff worked out. But I am, like I said, 1500 miles away. At the time that it closed, I was not able to fly. I was not able to do, I had had a brain bleed in two different places. Um, the doctors would not let me travel for eight months. I couldn't travel and I couldn't go down there. Um, one of the things that they told me was that you have to hire another director and I'm not about to hire somebody I don't know that I haven't met, that I haven't seen in action. Uh, so there was no director, there was no, no food, there's no anything there. There's not any way that I'm coming down there to open a daycare center, period. I didn't even, I couldn't even get, get down there to have the doors open so they could come in and do the inspections. Now, like Josh said, the batteries may have run out because no one's been there. They could have run out of the fire department, out of the exit lights or they could have run out of, I don't know, the fire detectors or smoke detectors or yeah, the batteries could have run out. But the point is at the time the doors closed, at the time there was an active license, an active operating facility, which is the only one that are those minimum licensing, that 80, she keeps going back to that 80 whatever. But the actual rules at the beginning of the book state, these are for operating facilities. And it is not, it is not operating. Uh, we have to have, you know, uh, there could be bugs in there because we are right next to a creek bed. It has been a problem for years and we've sprayed and we've cleaned and we've sprayed and we've cleaned. And every time we spray our building, they run over to the neighbor's house and then he sprays and they come back. It's just a never ending battle. They could have listed the bugs in the building as a reason to close the daycare. They could have listed, I don't know, the fact that there's no furniture for the kids to sit on as a reason to close the facility. This is just, there is not any purpose or except to be one final 
tweak, humiliation, whatever you want to call it, to an already closed facility. They knew it was closed. They've documented that. They knew that there was nobody there, no kids there. And so we are two months away from the year. If it had been not even two months, it's a month and a half to the end of the year. At the end of that year, it just automatically closes. And unless I send a letter, that's, this is in your regulations, not mine. If I send a letter requesting that it not be closed, that's a different story. So why are we in an empty building? Why are we so ambitious to put a black stain on a name that's been there for 30 something years that says we revoked, we took that license away from her. We revoked it. What's the purpose of that? I don't know. Yeah, I'm, that's all. Thank you. Okay. At this time, we'll go off the record uh, for the panel's recess for deliberations and a decision regarding the finding of fact conclusions of law. Um, once the board reaches uh, its decision, we'll uh, go back on the record. All right. Yes, thanks, Josh. Panel members, when you are ready, if you will type that into the chat box so that we will know that all six panel members are prepared, um, but just want to give you uh, time to think and uh, process. So just take your time and just let me know by typing it into the chat box. And then uh, Adam will go back on the record when they're ready. Just want to check in. Um, I see that five members have commented that they are ready. Uh, Dr. Marilyn Bailey Jefferson, just want to touch base and make sure that you have not gotten disconnected. It looks like you're still here. Um, again, no rush, but just want to check in and make sure you're able either to type or let us know. Okay, thank you. Just wanted to make sure. Um, Adam, we will go back on the record. I will call the uh, child right. care appeal. Go ahead. Okay, we're, we're back on, um, Madam Court Reporter, are you with us? All right, uh, Court Reporter, uh, Williams, I'm turning it over to you uh, for the vote. 
I will call your name and if you will just uh, say uphold if you uphold the agency's decision or overturn uh, if you disagree with the agency's decision. Um, and I'm going to start, I'm actually going to do this in reverse this time. So Joshua Sharp. Overturn. Carolyn Robinson. Overturn. Cynthia Martin. Opposed. Dr. Marilyn Bailey Jefferson. If you can type it in, if you can't use your mic, thank you. Dr. Lopez. Uphold. Uh, Trina White. To oppose, to overturn. I overturned it because okay. something okay. is about. Is that Trina speaking? I just want to make sure I get your vote, Trina. Uh, Trina, the court reporter couldn't hear what you said. If you can do it again. You had 27 pages of things, but some of those pages, licensing, kind of, I mean. Trina, I think you're um, I think you're cutting out. So the court reporter, we cannot hear you. If you want to type in your vote into the chat box, that will be fine. And I, we may have lost Trina, Adam. I can't tell if she's, I'm not seeing her. He is still connected, but just via okay. camera. Okay. Oh, she's lost her um, audio. Um, Trina, if you can type your response or, or your, your vote into the chat box, that way there can be a record of it. And I will try giving her a call in case she's disconnected. Oh, here we go. Okay. Thank you, Trina. Um, Adam, we have a tie. And I don't think I've ever had that happen in my time here. Okay, what are what are y'all's uh, regulations required in the event of a tie? Sky, can you check that please? I believe Tanya, you would cast that last vote. Um, but I do not know where that regulation is at the moment on that. Let me look up the panel. Uh, uh, thank you, Josh. I think you all are correct, but I just would feel more comfortable before I take that vote to make sure, Adam, that we are handling it correctly. I know that's most other panels or boards that I cover in the event of a tie, it's the chair that has to cast a deciding vote. However, I, I agree with the, Ms. Martin, you need to know what that regulation is first. Uh, so as you're doing that, I, a note from the court reporter, Laura, I have, let me read back. And if any of you um, have a different vote, let me know, but I'm going to read back the list and then put what I have down. 
Uh, Trina White had, had upholded in the chat box. Dr. Lopez had upholded. Dr. Marilyn Bailey Jefferson had overturned. Cynthia Martin had upholded. Carolyn Robinson had overturned. And Joshua Sharp had overturned. Did I miss anyone's vote? Or did I state that incorrectly? I had the vote as 3 3 on my end. Okay. And I'm looking up, so it's governed by Arkansas Code Annotated starting around uh, 20-78-202. Is that correct, Adam, what you're going by the Child Care Appeal Review Panel? Um, so I'm looking here to, to make sure Tanya is the tiebreaker. Hang on a second. Let me pull up Westlaw the code sec or what's the code section again? Um, I'm in 20-78-201 at Sequitur. Um, that's where the, the child care panel, that's the child care facility licensing act where the panel rules are located. Ashlyn, I think you might have found this one before. Do you recall um, where we found that? Because I, I do remember in the past we've discussed this and Tanya was the tiebreaker, but I can't remember what exact section that is in. Okay, so what I am looking at is 20-78-201. It is the Child Care Facility Licensing Act. And yes. It is. Yes, that's perfect. Number one. And it is under letter G. It says a majority. Oh, you're okay. I think your definitions. Are you in um, 202 definitions? And then you're said go to G. Uh, okay, you're correct, Adam. We found it. <laughs> um, if you'll go to um, the definitions 20 78 202 um, and look at uh, 1G, a majority of the panel shall constitute a quorum, and a majority may decide the issue in the event of a tie by the panel. The division of child care and early childhood education decisions shall stand. Okay, that is, appears to be how I read it uh, as well there.
And for the benefit of the record, what we're looking at is uh, ARC code annotated 20-78-202 uh, sub 1 capital G. Uh, again, to repeat this for the record, the majority of the panel shall constitute a quorum and a majority of those present may decide any issue before the panel in the event of a tie vote by the panel, the division of child care and early childhood education decision shall stand. So, Tanya, did, did you have the vote as a tie vote? I will read back through it um, just to make sure, but I thought I heard that you had the same, but it, please members, if I have if I have written down anything incorrectly, um, please let me know this. Um, Trina White typed in the chat box, upholded. Dr. Lopez had upholded. Dr. Marilyn Bailey Jefferson overturned. Cynthia Martin upholded. Carolyn Robinson overturned and Joshua Sharp overturn. So if I've gotten any panel members incorrectly, please speak up. Okay, I'm not seeing anything different in either the chat box or commentary uh, or comments here. Um, Tony, the way I read the rules, uh, the this is a tie vote. So the previous decision by the uh, Division of Child Care and Early Child Education panel uh, will stand. Adam, I just, uh, Laura, the court reporter has put a comment in. So I just want to clarify, Cynthia Martin, can you repeat if you upheld the agency's decision or if you overturn the agency's decision? Cynthia still with us? Yes, yes. I see. He answered in the chat. Okay, yes, thank you. Cynthia. You are correct with my answer. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you, Laura. Just, uh, I think it was hard to hear, but that was what I heard. So thank you for questioning that. And thank you, Cynthia, for repeating it. Thanks, Adam. Um, Ms. Martin, if you can uh, reduce the decision to writing. And yes. Upon uh, Ms. Martin Liu. Uh, Ms. Yes. Martin Liu, do you care to... Uh, the decision and appeal can be taken under any specific provisions relating to this uh, this board, uh, excuse me, this panel, or under the Administrative Procedures Act found in Arkansas annotated 2515-201 at SEC. And Ms. Martin, if you can also include that uh, in, in the notice. Yes, I'll include her appeal rights to circuit court in the notice, yes. Okay. Thank you. If, does if Tanya does Tanya not vote? Tanya Williams? I thought she was the tiebreaker. She she does not under the rules uh, that it's, that that's kind of what was discussed a few minutes ago under Arkansas Code annotated twenty seventy eight two o two, which explains the rules and definitions of this particular uh, this particular panel. Uh, it says a majority of the panel shall constitute a and a majority of those present may decide any issue before the panel. 
in the event of a tie vote by the panel, the Division of Child Care and Early Childhood Education decision shall, shall stand. So the way I read it is it would actually take, you would have to have a majority vote. Um, Under what circumstance did, they said she voted before. Under what circumstance was that? The, she What, what Ms. Martin was referring to was I think she's referring to some kind of prior hearing under different circumstances. Um, I vaguely remember this hearing from a year or so ago. Uh, it's it, it was under a different um, a different uh, posture of the Steps. case. I don't it was a, a license revocation. Yeah. And for. For clarification, Tanya Williams is the director of our division that, that made the decision. Tanya Williams? Yeah, she's the director of the Division of Child Care and Early Childhood Education that made the decision today. That made the decision today? The, the decision, I think what Ms. Martin's saying is the decision at issue to revoke the license whenever that decision a few months ago. Is that my understanding? Is my understanding, Ms. Martin? Yes, Tanya Williams is the director of the division that sought to revoke the license, which that decision today has been upheld. Okay. All right, so you're going to send me the appeal procedures? Yes, um, and, and they'll be re really short. Um, it is appealing to the circuit court, but yes, I'll send you a one page letter and it will have how you appeal um, in it. Okay. If there are no other questions or comments, uh, this hearing is concluded and the record is closed. Thank you.